Hello everybody and thank you very much for attending to this presentation. I'm Dr. Julio Garzón Roca and I am one of the authors of the contribution Structural Robustness Analysis of Concrete Tall and Super Tall Buildings developed at the University of Surrey together with Dr. Juan Sanzeta and Dr. Carl Mikayev. The topic of this contribution is robustness and progressive collapse. Robustness is understood as the insensitivity of a structure to a local failure, and the idea is avoiding that this kind of local failure can trigger a progressive collapse of the building. Particularly in this work, we are going to focus on flat slabs, where failure is mainly governed by punching. When robustness wants to be included in the design, there are different strategies. Here, we are going to consider alternative low path following a scenario-independent approach with a notional column removal. This work is part of the project Extension of Theoretical Models Against Progressive Collars for Tall and Super Tall Concrete Buildings, funded by the EPSRC body of the UK by means of an impact selection account held at the University of Surrey. In this project, we have also the collaboration of the Technical University of Valencia in the experimental validation of the model that we are going to see in the next slides, and also a professional collaboration by some members of the architectural and engineering company Skidmore, Orwins, and Merrill, some in Europe, who are especially interested in the development of structural solutions for space structures and their robustness. Now, focusing on this contribution, we have studied the progressive collapse of a tall flat RC slab building using a non-linear static analysis, considering the dynamic punching due to the column removal. For doing this, we have built a frame model and follow a push-down approach, which is similar to a classical pushover strategy, but using vertical displacements. Following this, we have also considered three possible scenarios depending on the column to be removed. Then in this slide, we can see a summary of the model formulation used for the assessment of the dynamic punching. This model, which has been uh, developed at the University of Surrey, uses two curves. First, we have the capacity curve, which is based on the critical crack theory of Professor Moutoni at the APFL, and then we have the demand curve, which follows the model code and also this acidostatic approach following the ideas of Professor Isudin at the Imperial College London. With this model, we can relate the potential shear load at a, at, a, at a column with the slab rotation in the surroundings. With these two values, we can establish if the column is failing due to punching the, or not. This model has been verified and validated in previous work and can be used for studying interior columns, edge columns, and corner columns. So, the case study uh, analyzed in this work consists of a 22-floor residential building made of flat slabs with a central reinforced concrete core and perimeter columns placed at 6 meters. This, this building was calculated following the Eurocode 2, including the punching reinforcement, and then convert into a frame model following the ASCE code used for a pushover analysis, but in this case, adapting it to considering the dynamic punching assessment according to the model that we have seen in the previous slide. Then we establish three possible scenarios. Scenario one corresponds to a corner column removal. Scenario two corresponds to an edge column removal adjacent to an, another edge column that is a column which is between two edge columns, and scenario three, an edge column removal when it's adjacent to a corner column. For this scenario, we consider two possible events, the column removed to be the basement column or a column uh, located in the middle of the building, that is in the floor 11th. Hinges layout for column removal were applied to all floors above the column removed, and at the column removed, we impose a vertical displacement of 0.4 meters, which was gradually increased to 
create and introduce the push down strategy and trigger the hinges activation. Here we can see a summary of the results. In scenario one, we can see that the hinges that appear lead to the collapse of the corner bay where the column was removed. In scenario two, where, where we only remove an, an edge column, which is in the middle of other uh, edge columns, we can see that what happened is that uh, we affect only the frame when the column is removed. Finally, in scenario three, when we remove an edge column adjacent to a corner column, we affect both the frame where the column is removed, is removed and the orthogonal frame. For finishing and sum summarizing this uh, work, we can say that the methodology developed was verified and applied to different damage scenarios in typical tall buildings. We had three scenarios. Scenario one was the less critical one and resulted in a corner bay collapsing. Scenario two involved the progressive collapse of a frame. And scenario three, which corresponds to an edge column removal adjacent to a corner bay, was the most critical one and affect both the frame where the column is removed and the orthogonal frame. In all cases, the collapse initiated in the floor where the column was removed and then propagate upwards. And just for finishing, it's worth to say that this work can be a starting point for analyzing the feasibility of the development of the forces in the system and compare with the ones proposed by different international codes. Thank you very much for your attention.